we're going to turn now to something almost all of us have felt over the past year, especially anxiety. And our next guest is here with some tools to not only help us live with it, but actually make it work for us. Yeah, joining us now is world renowned neuroscientist, award winning professor of neuroscience and psychology at NYU, and author of Good Anxiety Harnessing the Power of the Most Misunderstood Emotion, and a woman I feel like we need to apologize to. Sorry you had to sit through our little Australia there. We just went off the rails, Dr. Suzuki. Dr. Wendy Suzuki, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, Dr. Ashton's gonna stick around for this conversation as well, but what have you been seeing in your studies over the last year, uh, given the pandemic, in terms of people and their anxiety? So I couldn't help but notice that even before the pandemic, my students at NYU, my colleagues, my friends, myself, anxiety levels were going up. And that was supported by the idea and the statistic that 90% of Americans say they suffer from anxiety. That is a huge number that has gone up even more since the pandemic. Mm. So that 90% includes the almost 20% of Americans that suffer from clinical levels of anxiety. And since the uh, pandemic, three subpopulations have been particularly hard hit with clinical anxiety. That is the black population, the Zen Gen Zers that we were just hearing from just a, a few segments ago, and adolescent females. Mm. So this is an issue that I just said, we need a new way to address this. And that is why I wrote this book. Yeah. And you've mm. done extensive research on brain, uh, brain plasticity, which is the idea of how the brain can adapt uh, to one's environment. And you mentioned how medical pro professionals often overlook anxiety uh, or they try to combat anxiety rather than learning how to live with it. And you say that anxiety can actually be good. So explain that for yes. us. So the core of this idea is that evolutionarily, anxiety developed in us to protect us. So you might think, well, what's wrong now? How come it's not protecting us? Because too much of even a good thing is bad. And obviously our anxiety levels are very, very high. All right, well, Dr. Ashton, what kind of uh, physical impact, negative impact does it have anxiety on us? Well, any anyone who sees patients will recognize that this is something that, as we just heard Dr. Suzuki say, is affecting almost everyone. I mean, not a day goes by that I don't hear a patient complain about this. When you talk about the physical manifestations it can literally run the gamut and spectrum head to toe. We can talk about things like headache, TMG. It can affect your GI si system, your cardiovascular system. It can affect your skin. Obviously, it can affect your behavior, especially for people who aren't appropriately managed or treated and then turn to self-medication. This can be debilitating. And of course, we've all heard about the person who feels like they're having a heart attack, may in fact be having a heart attack, but it's dismissed as anxiety as if that's not as serious. I want to be crystal clear. It absolutely can be. And I think we have a problem in this society, in this country, of not taking things as seriously if you can't do a test for it necessarily. So really, people need to understand with the help of people like Dr. Suzuki, there is no shame in this game. It should be thought of no differently than diabetes or high blood pressure. And if you are suffering from anxiety, you should use every tool in your toolbox to help deal with it. And, and I saw Dr. Suzuki, Suzuki uh, shaking her head there with what you were saying, Dr. Jen. And I know it's all in your book here, but if you would give us some ways to start, not necessarily combating, yes. but dealing with, living with anxiety. Absolutely. So here are my top three tips. Number one, deep breathing because it activates our natural relaxation activator in our nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system. All you have to do is breathe deeply, slowly, inhale, deep breath out. And this is wonderful for our back to school time. Kids can use this in line if they're starting to get anxious. We can all use it in that meeting. We're starting to get anxious. Deep breathing is the best way to decrease anxiety immediately. Number two, physical activity, moving your body. Every single time you move your body, it's like giving your brain a wonderful bubble bath of neurochemicals that include dopamine, noradrenaline. And tip number three is change your what if list into a to-do list. Our stress response was evolved to have, to put us into action. So changing that what if list that is the initiator of so many anxiety uh, attacks, 
and changing that into a to-do list. Do something, talk to somebody, make an action to address that worry can help resolve those feelings of anxiety. And oh. those are my top three tips. Oh, incredible, incredible tips. Dr. Suzuki, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. Want to let our viewers know good anxiety, harnessing the power of the most misunderstood emotion will be available everywhere books are sold and that begins tomorrow. Thanks again. Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.